Hello and welcome back. So previously we learned that there's a lot of different things going on when we perform a hypothesis test. So what we're going to do now is kind of put all these things together and get a little bit of practice in with calculating or doing all the various calculations for a hypothesis test. So in my example I have a random survey of 75 death row inmates and that revealed that the mean length of time on death row is 17.4 years with a standard deviation of 6.3. So those are my sample statistics. We'll conduct a hypothesis test to determine if the population mean on death row could likely be 15 years. So likely be means equals to, we're looking at the mean being equal to 15. So state the hypotheses and identify the claim. So you have your null hypothesis and you have your alternative hypothesis. Mu equals 15 would go to which one? Which hypothesis always has the equal to? That would be your null hypothesis. Your claim would have to be your null hypothesis. So what would the alternative be? What's the opposite of equal to? Well, not equal to. So we're dealing with a, what is called a two-tailed test here. Now that that's done, <clears throat> remember what our hypotheses are. Mu equals 15 for the null hypothesis. Mu is not equal to 15 for the alternative hypothesis. And now I want to calculate the test statistic. So we're going to have to use one of the test statistic formulas here. Since I'm dealing with the mean, <clears throat> since the population standard deviation is unknown, I will use the following test statistic formula. X bar minus mu over S divided by square root of N. <clears throat> X bar is my sample mean x bar is 17.4 mu is 15 it's the population mean value that we're dealing with in our hypotheses 15. your sample standard deviation is 6.3 and your sample size n is 75 so square root of 75. so when you do your calculation on top you're actually going to get 2.4 and on the bottom you'll actually end up getting 0.7275 so make sure you are plugging this into your calculator correctly and you get 0.7275 for the bottom. And when you divide these two values, you will get a test statistic of 3.3. <clears throat> so now we have to find the p-value. So this will be the sum of the area of your, quote, critical regions. So if you draw your bell curve, this is a what-tailed test. Since not equal to is the null is the alternative hypothesis, this is a two-tailed test. So shade the right tail of your bell curve, shade the left tail of your bell, bell curve. The sum of these two tails, the sum of these shaded regions, will be your p-value, the sum of their areas. So I know that 3.3 .3 is the positive it's a positive test statistic and it's what separates the right region from the rest of the bell curve because you assume that the mean is zero that's because of the way we calculate our test statistics and how we standardize everything so our mean in the middle is zero so how are you going to find the area of that region for google sheets we'll go to the compute tab and we'll just use the normal region. For the sake of simplicity, we'll stick to using the normal region on the compute tab. Mu is zero, sigma is one. Where does your shading start? What's your lower bound? 3.3. .3. And where does your shading stop? What's your upper bound? It goes on forever, so you just put a really big number like six nines. So I will type this into Google Sheets, go to the compute tab, go to the normal region, Mu is 0, sigma is 1, lower bound is 3.3, .3, upper bound is 6 nines, and let's look at what the area is. It's going to calculate it for us. Decimal places you actually do end up getting 0 0.000, the 4 rounds up to a 5, so 0 0.0005. So this right tail area is actually 0 0.0005. And because of symmetry about zero, the left tail area is also 0 0.005. So that means your p-value 
because this is a two-tailed test, because it's two-tailed, your p-value will be the sum of your left tail and your right tail. So 0 0.0005 plus 0 0.0005. You could also just take 0 0.0005 and times it by 2. But at the end of the day, you get 0 0.001. That's going to be your p-value for this test. <clears throat> Let the level of significance be alpha equals 0 0.05 and consider a test statistic of 2 which is obtained when testing the claim p is greater than 0.5. So I first want to find the p-value. And the first thing I want to make clear to you is always use the test statistic to find the p-value. Always. That's the relationship there. The test statistic is used to find the p-value. So let's draw a picture. Let's draw our bell curve. We're dealing with z-scores here, standardized data values, so the mean has to be zero. What type of test is this? If I have p is greater than 0.5, which is going to be my, you know, it would be my alternative hypothesis if I was to write out my hypotheses, greater than indicates a right-tailed test. Right-tailed. <coughs> so I, on my bell curve, I will shade the right tail. And the value that separates this right tail from the rest of the graph will be my test statistic of 2. So to find the p-value, I will use Google Sheets. I have a mu of 0. I have a sigma of 1. Sigma of 1. My lower bound would be 2. And my upper bound would have to be a really big number. Let's just say 6 nines. <coughs> This is how we find the p-value. We use the test statistic. So normal region 0 and 1, your lower bound is going to end up being 2, 2 and your upper bound 6 nines. So your p-value to four decimal places is 0 0.0228. 0 0.0228. That's 0 0.0228. 0 0.0228. I always like to at least write out part of the word p-value. I don't like to write p equals because then we might get confused with proportions and other fancy notation. So p-value is 0 0.0228. Find the critical values. Well, you will use alpha, your significance level, to find critical values. Always. We're still dealing with the same type of test. It's still right-tailed. Right-tailed for life on this example. So shade the right tail. And your goal now when you find a critical value is to find the x-axis value that separates the tail from the rest of the graph. Alpha is the area of the shaded tail. Since this is a one-tailed test, Alpha goes in the entire right tail. So alpha is the area, which means 0 0.05. <clears throat> so in Google Sheets, if you want to find the data value, you would say, okay, mu is equal to 0. Sigma is equal to 1. And then you need to know the area to the left of the data value you are trying to find. Well, if the area to the right is 0 0.05, the area to the left is 1 minus that. We have to draw the picture. The picture helps put things into perspective because sometimes you have a right-tailed test, sometimes you have a left-tailed test, sometimes you have a two-tailed test where you have two tails shaded. So these are the three things we need. 0, 1, and area to the left of 0.95. We will type those into Google Sheets. 0 and 1 are already there. Left-tailed area, 0.95, and look at that. <clears throat> we have our critical value. So it looks like our critical value is about 1.64. One thing to make sure is if you're not getting the same readings as me in your Google Sheets spreadsheet, it's possible somehow the formulas might have been affected. So feel free whenever things don't agree to try resaving a new copy of the spreadsheet using the master link. And that should fix your issues about 9 out of 10 times. So 1.64. So my critical value is 1.64. That's the value that separates 
usual versus unusual values of the test statistic. <clears throat> now let's let the level of significance be 0 0.05. Consider a test statistic of z equals negative 1.75, which is obtained when testing the claim p equals 1 third. So if you were to write out the hypotheses for this test, p equals 1 third is the null, and then p not equal to 1 third would be the alternative. <clears throat> Let's find the p-value. I think it's important to know that what we have here is a two-tailed test. Not equal to means we have a two-tailed test. <clears throat> so when you find the p-value, remember p-val is found from the test statistic, always. Write that statement out a hundred times and I promise you'll never go wrong here. <clears throat> Draw your bell curve and since it's a two-tailed test, shade the left tail and shade the right tail. I know that I'm dealing with z-scores, so the mean in the middle is zero. Where would this test statistic of negative 1.75 go? Would it go in the left tail or the right tail? Since it's negative, it should go to the left of zero, so it should be that cutoff value that separates the left tail from the rest of the bell curve. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is if I go to Sheets, Google Sheets, <laughs> I have mu equals zero, I have sigma equals one, I'm finding area under a curve, so I need my lower and upper bound. For the left region, I, the lower bound is a really big negative number, so negative followed by six nines. And the upper bound, where does the shading stop? It stops at negative 1.75. And that's what we're going to type into Google Sheets. We're going to find the area of that left tail. So 0, 1, I'm using the normal region. Lower bound is negative six nines. And then my upper bound is actually going to end up being negative 1.75. <clears throat> so what is the area of that tail? It's 0 0.0401. The 0 in the fourth decimal place rounds up to a 1 because there's a 5 afterwards. 5 or higher, you round up. 0 0.0401. 0 0.0401. <clears throat> Alright, so the p-value is the sum of the two tails. This is a two-tailed test, so my p-value is going to be whatever my area of one of my tail, tails is times 2. You add the p-value twice, or you can multiply it by 2. Either one's going to give you what you need. So 0 0.0802, that is your p-value. So for a two-tailed test, you take the area of one of the tails, and you double it, or add it to itself. Because the left tail has an area of 0 0.0401, which means because of symmetry, the right tail has to have an area of 0 0.0401. So careful with these two-tailed tests. You just don't take the output from Google Sheets and use that as your answer. You have to double it for a two-tailed test. <clears throat> well, let's find the critical values. Since it's a two-tailed test, you will have two critical values. Remember, critical values are found from alpha. So, <clears throat> shade your left tail, shade your right tail. You're looking for a positive critical value, and then you'll be looking for a negative critical value. Two-tailed test means you have two critical values. So if alpha is 0 0.05, that leaves how much for each of the regions? 0 0.05 divided amongst the two regions. 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0.025. <clears throat> Alright, so I have 0 0.025 as the right-tailed area, 0 0.025 as the left-tailed area. To find the negative critical value, <clears throat> you'll go to Google Sheets, mu is 0, sigma is 1, and then area to the left. For the negative critical value, the area to the left is 0 0.025. Let's type these three things in the Google Sheets. So I'm finding a critical value, I'm finding a data value, 0 and 1, and then left-tailed area 0 0.025. You get about negative 1.96. That's negative 
So my negative critical value is negative 1.96. Because of symmetry, what's my positive critical value? Positive 1.96. So two-tailed tests have a positive and a negative critical value. That's what separates the rejection region or critical region from the rest of the bell curve. <clears throat> all right, so a lot of practice here with p-values, critical values, and all that fun stuff. But remember, p-value is found from the test statistic, and then critical value is found using alpha. So let's assume a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05, and the claim is that women with a, have a mean height equal to 160. The hypothesis test results in a p-value of 0.0614. So identify the hypotheses and state the conclusion about the null hypothesis. So will we reject it or fail to reject it? <clears throat> Alright, so a mean equal to 160. Would that be a null or an alternative hypothesis? Does it contain equal to? Yes. Equality always goes with the null hypothesis. What's the opposite? not equal to. So my claim is my null hypothesis. <clears throat> so let's compare the p-value to alpha. 0 0.0614 to 0.05. Remember, p-value compared to alpha. The p-value is 0 0.06 is greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. We must fail to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject our claim. Since we fail to reject our claim, that means all eyes are on the null hypothesis, all eyes are on the claim. That means <coughs> because my null hypothesis contains, my because my null hypothesis was, I failed to reject it, because the claim contains equality, meaning it's the null hypothesis, I use the following structure for my statement. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that women have heights with a mean equal to 160. When your claim is the null hypothesis, your statement's always talking about your conclusion in terms of rejection or failure to reject. So what you've just learned is basically how to do all the various parts of a hypothesis test and all the do the various calculations using technology to a certain extent. What we're going to do next, though, is literally take everything and type it into Google Sheets. And Google Sheets is going to literally tell us the p-value and all of the other information we need for this hypothesis test. So it'll make our job a lot easier. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.